Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 10 scouting mistakes you need to stop making in Dynasty mode. Before we do get into the video, guys, as always, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Let's keep growing to 30K. I'd say 26K, but hopefully by the time you're seeing this, we already hit that. If not, keep it going, keep it pushing. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. As always, likes help out the video a ton. So if you're new here, you're early to the video, make sure to hit that like as soon as possible. It, I greatly appreciate them. Can we get 500 likes on this video? I'd greatly appreciate that as well. And comment down below if you have anything to add to this list. As always, like I always say, I could probably make 100, 100 items on this list, but I narrowed it down to 10. So if you have anything else, add it down below. We feel free to comment, thread, argue it, whatever you want to do down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter. And I'm hosting an underdog fantasy best ball league down below with up to 10 subs. I will be hosting a few of these. So by the time you click on it, it's full. There will probably be more. So make sure to check me out over on Twitter. I will be posting more. I will be updating them down below as we go. But if you haven't already signed up for underdog, use my codes. Make sure you get the bonus and then join the underdog draft and compete against me and show me your fantasy skills. And also there's currently a Kelsey free pick on underdog. So make sure you sign up and go use that free pick. It's basically free money. If he gets more than half a yard, which is one yard in a game, you do automatically win that. It doesn't get easier than that. So make sure you go down below and use my code so you can get this free pick. So my first tip of things that you want to be avoiding is when setting your list, right? Make sure that you look at your list holistically. So I'll show you what I mean right here. Just going to set this up pretty quickly for you guys. So you can have an idea for, for how I'm going to do this. Let's just say let's add a few QBs here. Let's add a few wide receivers. And I'll show you exactly what the problem is going to be with how you set up a board in just a second. And you'll understand why it's so important to make sure you check out your list early on. So we set up this board real quick. You're going to want to go through each time and go through your entire list holistically, right? So we have 31 players on this board. Don't look at it like this. What you're going to want to do before scouting a single player is do this. Go through once you and really set your board. Don't just add players to it. Like really set your board. Look at players that are interested in you, players that you need, positions you need, and then go through like this. Okay, so I have five quarterbacks on the board. I have no running backs. I have no wide receivers. I have four tight ends. So I have a lot of left guards and right guards, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of ends. So here's going to be my problem. I see this far too much from people. Okay, let's go position by position. Start with quarterback. Quickly scout through. Burn some hours. Burn some hours. Keep going through. You see our points dropping. And we just go through. We, we do five straight quarterbacks out. Red gem. Okay, remove him from the board. No problem. Keep going through. Green gem. Okay, he's pretty solid. 82 speed. Let me get a few more. You know what? Those quarterbacks sell, but I want at least two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks that I can scout. Going to add a few more real quick go back. Got to get the quarterback right, right? So you do this. Okay. Red gem. Don't want him. Keep going through. So on and so forth. You get the point. I just spent almost 200 hours across these quarterbacks right now trying to find a quarterback I want. Keep in mind, you may already have a quarterback on the roster who's a freshman or sophomore. You don't need one. And you just wasted about one fifth of all your hours on a quarterback. And odds are, first off, you're only going to bring in one maybe two and you may not even win those so you just wasted so many points and then you do this you go through and you're like wait i really need guards all right i gotta scout these my dns are really rough i really need right, right ends and keep in mind there's multiple positions like quarterbacks you only have to scout one but when you get to like d end and cornerback and stuff you need a you need to scout like you, you need three cornerbacks right three to four cornerbacks so you may want to scout like 10 of them because you want to bring in three to four solid ones. So now to scout all those quarterbacks plus the quarterbacks, you're down to like 600. Then you do the end, you're down to like 200. Very quickly, you can't scout anything else. So make sure that you set your board first and you go through like, okay, I have a lot of quarterbacks, but I also have a lot of ends and I have a lot of guards. Let me start with what I definitely need first. Make sure you look at your board. Don't start at quarterback because I've done, I've done this too. And I'm telling you from my own experience, I've had a league where when I first started my first sim league offline, I did all my quarterbacks. I did all my running backs. I did all my wide receivers like this. When I got to tackles, I was down to 200 hours. And that was it. My whole first week was screwed because I couldn't scout anyone else. I had to blind offer. So do not be doing that. Next thing ties into the last thing. Don't over scout one position. For instance, what I would do is let's say there's quarterbacks here. I would probably scout my five stars first. Get a good, okay, my five stars are good. I'll wait on the four stars. Again, I'm gonna go through this later in the video. So stay tuned, but it depends on the size of school of how you're gonna handle this. But for me as LSU, I would start with five stars. I'd start there, okay. Let me go, let me move on down. Tight ends. Okay, I only have three stars and four stars. I don't necessarily need one. I could wait. 
offensive guard no five stars okay let me make sure i get the guys i need here now some people may be saying you don't need to scout five stars they're good that's not necessarily true and if you're a big program you need elite talent to see the field taking in just general talent because they had good star ratings doesn't help your program so like right here okay these guys are five stars let me see what they're about good has platinum abilities great abilities that's a guy i want to go for cool this guy's really good too definitely a guy i want and so on and so forth okay right outside linebacker nothing going on there check the safeties out okay i got my five stars handled now i can keep going you want to make sure you don't over scout one position now once you've done all that you can come back and now start to prioritize okay i only did three quarterbacks they're pretty solid but i do definitely i do definitely want to see another one i scout this guy he's a gem okay one four star now keep going back through make sure you don't over scout one position because think about it this way like i said before you scout 10 quarterbacks you bring in one and he doesn't even see the field your whole rest of your classes are basically going to be unscouted because you over scouted one position do not do that next, next thing and i'm not going to simulate this here because i still want to keep you in the scouting phase do not continuously scout all season i i've seen this a lot like once you use this this first week is so important to get the scouting right you basically want to ride this wave what i basically do is when considering the rest of my season i know i can't recruit all 33 players at one time so what i do is i might offer a scholarship to all of them in the first week but i'm only going to actively send max points to about 10 to 20 of them depending on the size of your school once week four or five hit and i start to commit some of those guys or lose some of them or i start to take some guys off my board i'll then go down to the next layer of players i scouted this is important i see some people who have like they scout the first 30 guys they have right in this week they go and actively recruit the first 20 guys once they're done in week four instead of going back like oh yeah odell or rugs are sitting here and i've scouted them and they look pretty solid instead i'm going to go back to this prospect board and i'm going to go look and see who else is available hmm, maybe i'll bring these guys in and i'll start scouting them do not waste your in-season points on unscouted players or they might just start making offers to these guys without scouting them if you already have players scouted and you wasted the time and they look pretty solid continue with them for the most part unless they're completely horrible but like i said if they're solid what i like to do is i get back to the bottom 20 okay i did my first 20 i have some extra points let me go down why this is problematic is if you start bringing in you guys on like week three or week four you may only have earned back about 200 hours from these other guys and you need to immediately get back on that recruiting trail and start recruiting these other four stars that maybe you left unrecruited the importance of doing that is now you can keep going you can keep going with this class the whole the best strategy is to recruit guys as early as possible and start the second level of recruiting and waves on the four stars that went unrecruited because everyone's focusing on the five stars by doing scouting mid-season you're just burning hours i know so many people who weeks three through seven keep scouting and then by week eight they're like oh, I, I can't get this guy i'm falling behind on this guy and then you see classes of like six people they signed that is how that happens do not continuously scout during the season when can you scout during the season there's a caveat to this after like week eight once you have like your 15 to like 20 guys that you really want like when you when you're in a solid place you got the class that you wanted that's when i'm like okay i'm not gonna go take bad four stars that's when i'll go take a look at a at a, at a cornerback that went on scout i may go look for some gems i may go i may go scouting for some other lower players because you can because i don't want to just bring in garbage the guys i'm going to round up my class with are going to be guys that i think are useful i don't need 20 to 35 guys i'm going to just try to get some more useful studs late but that's about it next thing is scouting to max every single time this does depend on your school but like i said before if you get to, if you're lsu you want the big school and you get down to 400 hours and you still have like half your roster worth of scouting because you went to max and all of them you want to start taking this one by one so let's say for halfback I may just click it once. Okay. Let's say you're a big speed halfback guy. If you see a bar like this, okay, he's, he's he has a chance to be really fast. I'll take it one more step further. He has a chance to be super fast. I'll take it one more step further. 92 speed. Great. Worthwhile. That's fine. And again, this all comes down to you and what you like doing with your players. But for me, like if I'm looking for speed at halfback right here, speed's pretty high. Keep scouting him. Go for it. Green gem, 94 speed. This guy's actually insane. He has really good power back stuff too. Uh, but you keep going through. So right off rip right here 91 speed let's say your deal breaker for you is like i want a 93 speed plus back stop here why continue if you don't want anyone above 91 speed now he may be really good like we can keep going and he may be really good but you may have a deal breaker of i want to back with 83 speed i want to back over 200 pounds look at all these things first before before maxing out you could see, you can get a pretty good idea for how a player is going to look on their first advance so right here tight ends tight ends are really easy let's say you want a tight end that has at least 85 speed right off rip He's a blocking tight end. You don't even see his speed on here. He's definitely super slow. Same thing. It's a vertical threat. His speed's an 85 right off rip. You can just stop. If you just want a tight end with speed, that's all you care about. You can stop right there. Make sure you look at these things first or their abilities. If you see right on the right that their ability is only going to have like one or two right off rip, like right here, like, okay, he's going to have four abilities. This looks pretty solid. 
or he has 85 speed in NXL. This looks solid. You can stop there if you want, if you're not looking for gems. This is especially more helpful with lower tier schools. Bigger schools, like I said, want elite talent. If you're a one star through like a three star, you probably just want to stop. If it's a four star and you definitely need top tier talent, you can just stop there. You got to be very careful with your hours when scouting. So there's two here. So for the fifth one, small schools scouting five stars and four stars. Don't, you don't have to waste your time scouting five stars, especially if you're a small school, let's just say you're a small school and this guy Odell right here is a five star and let's say he has you at one, right? If he has you at one, you don't need to scout him or he has you in the top five. You don't need to scout him. As a small school, what you're focused on is going to be getting top tier talent in to increase your overall, to increase your prestige, to win more games, to keep just building up your top recruiting tier classes by getting elite recruiter, by developing players. All you're focusing on is getting your foundation better. You're, you're, you're a team full of 60 overalls. You want to get that foundation better as a one, two, three star school. Don't scout them. Does it matter to you if the five star is really good versus decent as a five star? Does it matter if they're a red gem versus a green gem versus a non gem? You're go If they want to go to your school, you're bringing them in anyway. So what does it matter? Don't waste your hours there. Same thing with four stars. As a school, as a school, like a, as a smaller school, what I'm focusing on is bringing in all the five and four stars I can. After that, what I'm probably doing is looking at unrecruited four stars, of course, but also going to the three star list and being like, okay, this guy, I'm you know, maybe in their top. So let's go here. Let's say we focus by interest. I'm first on these guys. Maybe what I'm going to do is check out all these three stars right here that are going maybe unrecruited. Look, no offers. Not many people are making three star offers yet. Go into these and start scouting the three stars and seeing if you have any gems there, because here's the difference. A three star gem has good potential, good ceiling. And you can scout those actively because the five and four stars are just inefficient. You're going to take them if they want to go to your school. The three stars aren't players you're going to be just loading up with for no reason. You don't want three stars that are 60 overall that have no ceiling because that's just a, that's just more players that you already have. So you want the three stars to have a high ceiling and the five and four stars come with a pretty solid floor. So you don't have to worry about them. Now for the next tip, big schools is the reverse. You want to be scouting the five and four stars. And I told you why. Because if you get a five star that's a red, that's a red gem, it really doesn't do much help. It doesn't really help you much. So right here, this guy's five star. He's he's not a gem. He's just normal. This is a five star that you want to look at their abilities, their finesse move, their speed. For instance, a edge rusher, let's say, had a 72 speed. Although he might be a five star, that's not really good to be an edge rusher. Maybe you can move him into like a into like a DT spot. But like this guy right here, 88 finesse move with 77 speed is an elite an elite defensive tackle with good abilities. This is the guy you want. Now, let's say you did this and Ryan Odell was a red gem. That's a waste of your time for the most part. If you're like an LSU or Georgia, you don't need a red gem to tackle. I've went over a hundred times. People think that red gems are just slightly lower tier five stars or four stars. That's not the case. Their ceiling is going to be greatly capped. They may start off as a 77 overall, but they may never grow beyond like 84 or 83. So a team like Georgia, LSU, Ohio State, Notre Dame, these players won't ever start. So it's a waste of your recruiting hours. So you want to be checking out these five and four stars because you want to be basically be bringing in good stat four stars and abilities, green gem four stars, and you want to be bringing in five stars who are normal or better. That's basically where you're aiming. Now for the three stars, you don't want to be bringing in many three stars. So if you are, you can scout them. I don't think you should be bringing any three stars. If you are, it's later in the season. If you find a gem or two or you need some depth, but you're really not looking at those players to be future starters. So I'm focusing on five and four for big schools. The next tip is scouting useless positions. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna go for certain positions, it's just like a fantasy draft. Do it later on. Like I see people scouting for fullbacks like this. Like okay, I do need a fullback though. But these are all three star fullbacks. They're not gonna make or break your class. They're not gonna be starting them every down unless you're a certain program. Do not be adding fullbacks to your list and scouting them. That is such a waste of scouting points. They're gonna they're fullbacks. They're not gonna make or break the program. Not many people are gonna be actively recruiting them. It's like fantasy. Same thing with kickers. You're probably going after them later. Unless you have a complete deficit at kicker, maybe start a little earlier, but do not just sit here and start scouting kickers. Do not like the worst thing you could do is look at these first four kickers or five kickers and look for kick power right off rip and be like, oh, they're all kind of bad. I'll take them off my board. You just lost 150 scouting points or less or more, depending on packages. Make sure that you don't just waste these. Come back to punter, kicker, and fullback. I do punter, kicker, fullback literally like the final few weeks. Like after week eight, if I have my 25, 22, 19 recruits already locked in, like I'm almost done. I am have almost my full 900 hours back. I don't know what to do. I just start scouting around. That's fine. Do not waste them on useless positions. Next is calculating your scouting points. This is very important. So as you know, every position doesn't necessarily have the same amount of scouting requirements because you may have packages. So for instance, defensive tackles right here. I did that in two clicks. That's 20 points. So LSU has a package that requires less scouting. That's tier one of the recruiting tree, less scouting for DTs. 
So let's just say I have five DTs on the board that I really want to scout. So I get up the calculator. It requires 20 points per DT. So that'd be a hundred points for me to do five DTs. If it was a quarterback where I don't have that package, let's say it was a tight end where I don't have that package, it would require three clicks, that's 30. So this would require 150 points per. So make sure you are checking this. This would be an easy way to line it up. So let's say you have all your recruits lined up. You can go one by one. Okay, so I have five quarterbacks, six quarterbacks on the board. I have five halfbacks on the board. Go through and calculate each one, write it down on paper. When you add it all up, you're gonna notice, okay, for me to scout my entire class, this is gonna cost me 1500 hours. Even as a team like LSU, that's not enough. In which points, which point you also want to deduct your scholarships. Let's say you want to offer 30 scholarships week one. So you got to deduct another 150 because it's 30 times five. So you're going to want to subtract 150, which leaves you close to about 975 and then subtract the remainder. You're negative 600. So now you got to go and start taking players off of your initial scouting list. So what I would do is not, not remove them, but be like, okay, I only, I, this five star is important to me. I'll scout only two, four stars first. And just be careful as you go down because you don't want to over allocate and realize that you're 600 short because that could be your entire defense so make sure that you are calculating all your scouting points before you start scouting second to last one here make sure you go over to coach abilities and look at what you have like i just said when 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 calculating make sure you look at your ability so for instance lsu has the coaching ability for the quarterbacks okay takes less time to fully scout so this one's only going to require 20 points to scout d lineman same thing linebacker same thing db same thing offensive linemen wide receivers and running backs don't so what you don't want to be doing is loading up your board with these players. Of course, you can, after season two, use some of your points to maybe even that out across the board, but don't be, don't make a board of only when, when you're trying to dial back, like I was saying, don't make your board. Okay. I'll do four D linemen and I'll do four running backs so that I can get within the range. That's not that efficient because it's not the same. So maybe you could do instead 60 linemen and only three halfbacks or two halfbacks and 70 linemen because 70 linemen is only 140 seven running backs are 210 so you'll be able to scout a lot more so in, in this situation two running backs and two and two d linemen's nine versus seven running backs would be way over you would only be able to do like four running backs for the price of what you could get for seven of these so make sure that you are being careful with that you can scout so much more talent that way so what i've been doing especially in my builds is i'm not scouting too many running backs or wide receivers or o-linemen early on in my first season or two, I definitely need them. So I am only doing like two or three to make sure I'm bringing some in. But until I get those packages up, I don't want to be scouting like that. I could scout, if you have the packages right, you could literally scout so much more. You can scout an extra 33% worth of players. So let's say for every 100 players, if you did running backs, I could do 66. If you did D line, you could do 99. So that's a big difference in scouting. Lastly, so important. One of the most important things before you spend a single point on scouting, similar to what I just said, go over to your roster at the beginning of every season and look at what you have. Look at what you need. Because again, let's say let's say running backs. If you look at LSU, they have a freshman running back who's pretty elite, Durham, uh, Durham, as I've been saying it wrong. Durham, he's an elite freshman running back. Like he's really good. Like he's always gonna be really great. And then I also have some sophomores and another redshirt freshman. I don't really necessarily need many running backs. I'm only losing one senior. I have no one that's really draft eligible. So I have at least four. So for me, if I'm bringing in a running back, I'm only looking to bring in like one each year. So I'm only gonna scout like two or three. Now here's where the problem is. Let's say you go to position like strong safety here or free safety. LSU has one, two, three, four, five, six free safeties. And they're freshmen, juniors, and sophomores. No one's draft eligible here. No one's leaving. Of course you can encourage transfer, but let's say I go and I scout seven free safeties. I need a good one. I, I, I don't, they're not great. I scout seven free safeties. I don't need seven free safeties. So I'm just scouting to find one really. Now let's say you scout seven free safeties and you find three good ones. Now you bring them in, you have nine free safeties. I actually made this mistake in my first dynasty run. I did make that mistake because I didn't really calculate how many free safeties I had. This is a position that you don't really have to upgrade just yet. Like you want to find depth to be built with. You don't need players immediately. So I would just try to find one good guy per year and just keep tossing them into build. Maybe two guys. Strong safety, somewhere where you could use a player. Middle linebacker, pretty weak. Two seniors. This is a position where you want to scout like seven to eight middle linebackers. You want to bring in three. You want to bring in like three freshmen. So you've got red shirt two, maybe start the other one because you're literally going to lose your entire class this year. That's why you want to be doing that because what the worst thing to do in, as LSU, let's say, is scout seven free safeties, then go and scout 70 tackles, then go and scout a bunch of wide receivers. Look at all these wide receivers. Go scout a bunch of wide receivers and some running backs. Then you bring those guys in, you end up at a deficit at so many other positions and you misinterpreted what you should have been scouting and focusing on. And that's important. Or even worse, you scout the running backs, you scout the free safeties, and you waste all your scouting points. Then you notice you're also like week one or two, and you're like, oh, I did this wrong. Let me reallocate. Now you're going to lose that first set of recruits, and you're not going to beat other teams starting late, 
or you're gonna have to start sending offers and scout and recruiting players that you haven't scouted it's just a recipe for disaster make sure you are checking your roster first that is it for the video i hope you guys did enjoy if you're new to the channel subscribe as always let's get to 30k if you haven't already liked the video let's get 500 likes in this video each and every like goes a long way if you made it this far please give it a thumbs up helps me out a lot and of course comment down below if you have any other variable ways to go about doing this or again there could be a list of 100 things so make sure if you have any other things to add comment them down below we can debate it down below and add some more advice for the community and if you haven't already check out the underdog best ball fantasy link so you can join my fantasy league if it is full just dm me on twitter comment down below i'll start up another one to start getting some more people in that one and make sure to use my code so you do support the channel and of course get your bonus thank you so much for watching i'm out peace